Welcome to Combined Gas Laws. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is just uh, what individual gas that would basically what gases do. They're all treated as doesn't matter if it's argon or neon or air. Gases are very far apart. They um, we can pretty much just treat gases as gases. That we don't have to distinguish between any of the individual type of gases yet. So for one of the first things that happens is uh, it you know around the time of the hot air balloons in France, um, char or the boils all came up, and it's the pressure of a gas and the volume of a container initially uh, can change, and that is if you increase the pressure, more pressure, less volume. So imagine you're standing by the pool, and your eardrum is a capsule of gas with a certain volume, and there's not much pressure outside. You jump in the pool, you go way down, the pressure goes way up, volume's going to go down, and you'll feel some pain. Okay, uh, next one then, and this is assuming now temperature stays the same. Now, let's imagine Charles' Law. Again, same time, hot air balloons, right? They're trying to figure out how they work. Well, <clears throat> take a can of soup that has, you know, a, a few gas bubbles in it. Has some volume, and it's at let's say room temperature. Now what would happen if you take that can of soup and all of a sudden you stick it on a stove. Temperature skyrockets. Volume is going to want to go up too. It's proportional. Now notice these are always what we have before and what we have after. Uh, and so this would be Charles Law. Now this is assuming however pressure stays the same. Uh, Boyle's Law was assuming temperature stayed the same. Now what would happen then if we looked at the last one, let's say we try and keep volume the same. So suppose we have a certain pressure and uh, at a certain temperature. Now for this one, scuba divers, right? You imagine that <coughs> you've got a set volume, steel tank, given pressure, given temperature. If the temperature goes way up, if there's a heat source nearby, you check the pressure gauge that goes up. Or vice versa. But this is assuming volume stays the same. Now in the real world, <coughs> excuse me, it was never possible to do change two things and always have one stay the same. Uh, so then they said, well what if we do this? What if we take Boyle's Law, Charles Law, and Guy Lussac, we put them together. Now I like the combined gas law because if you just know the combined gas law, you don't have to memorize everything else. So let's <coughs> sorry. <coughs> let's say you have a problem with, you know, they say you're given the set pressure, volume, and temperature. You have a new pressure, a new temperature. What's the volume you can find? Or let's say, for instance, they uh, just give you, you know, pressure, volume. You're given a new pressure. You're given a new volume. If they don't mention temperature, assume it's constant. It just cancels out. Or let's say you have a problem where there's a volume and a temperature. You're given a new volume to ask what the new temperature is. Again, if they didn't mention pressure, um, whichever one they don't mention, just assume it can it will cancel out. So that way you don't need to know all these laws. If you just know this one <coughs> for the simple type problems, you'll be covered. So now we need to talk about units. And for the units, here's what we got. These units right here are all dealing with pressure. One atmosphere is about what we are right now at, at uh, sea level. This supports a column of mercury that's 760 millimeters high or 760 centimeters high. One atmosphere <coughs> is the same thing as 101.3 kilopascals. It's the same thing as 760 torricellis or it's the same as 29.92 inches of mercury. That's a column that the atmosphere supports. So basically, the atmosphere <coughs> is putting this much pressure. It's also about 14 pounds per square inch it is the force of this pressure of air driving down something. And the key with pressure, um, you'll have to know to convert between probably these right here. And <coughs> the key <coughs> in doing these problems, excuse me, is that <coughs> whichever one you use, you have to be consistent. You have to, if you have millimeters of mercury on this side, has to be the same on this side. If you've got PSI on this side, has to be the same on this side. Uh, 
you know, you can't have like PSI over here and then millimeters of mercury over here. Um, next one would be temperature. This is a huge one. Don't ever do anything when we're doing these gas laws in Celsius. It has to be in Kelvin. Kelvin takes into account the idea of absolute zero. Here's why you can't use Celsius. It's possible on a cold winter day to go out and see ice and snow and to know that it is zero degrees Celsius. But if you put in zero in any of these, mathematically we, we can't solve it. The model always has to fit nature. So they said, Lord Kelvin said, well, what if we take into account, um, you know, not just water freezing and water boiling, but what would absolute zero be? Uh, he did that actually using gas laws. And Celsius plus 273 is always Kelvin. And finally, volume, um, excuse me, volume is whatever you have, the amount of space takes up, whether it's in milliliters through milliliters, cubic centimeters through cubic centimeters, liters, liters, uh, cubic meters, cubic meters, you just have to be consistent. Okay, that's it for gas laws, and hopefully now you will now have a combined gas law problem, and you should be able to do some of the ones now on the UT website. Thanks a lot, have a great day.